Low snowpack, rising temperatures, and lack of spring rain leading to yet another dangerous fire outlook. Darla Givens now at Yosemite National Park, a World Heritage Site where an out of control fire has scorched nearly 1 million acres. The fire today would have burned 250,000 acres 40 years ago, but today in 2050, it's burning a million acres. That's because of the higher evaporation rate, which leads to drier fuel, and that leads to the larger fires. The fire that is burning, it's burning a million acres. Hundreds of people have been evacuated, and all campers have been asked to make their other arrangements as the Forest Service tries to handle this blaze. The area had barely recovered from earlier fires and bark beetles have burrowed deep into the damaged pine trees, leading to an abundance of fuel. Fire officials say due to the warm temperatures and abundant fuel, it may be months before this fire is completely contained. We talked about tree mortality. Here behind me are some aerial views of some of the trees that have died throughout many of the national forests. Harry Stockman joins us now with more on how these trees are providing fuel for our mega fires. 35 years ago in the year 2015, there was a drought in California and that drought caused a lot of trees to die. You can see pictures here of these brown trees is devastating combination of the lack of water and also the stress that the drought placed on trees at higher elevations, which invited the pine bark beetle in and that beetle caused a lot of this devastation. Something like 12 and a half million trees were wiped out throughout California during that drought. Since that time, the droughts, of course, are cyclical, but they have gotten worse, longer and more devastating up there. So in the next 35 to 40 years, by 2090, we could be wiping out. This little beetle could be helping wipe out a lot of the forestation in the Sierra Nevada. And the Sierra Nevada could actually look a lot more like the desert areas of Mexico than the natural, beautiful forests that we're used to seeing in the northern Sierra Nevada. Water view is a reality for more and more homeowners from the Delta to the Valley. Rob Karlmark joins us on the debate over rising waters. Well, Monica, the debate still rages on. Should we continue to spend money on all of the pumping stations and all of the big levee improvements? Now, I want to take you back to 2015 when sea level was three feet lower than where it is now. You could see the huge area that was under threat. The biggest impacts right here close to the California Delta. Now, we lost the land, the ag land on the west side of the Deepwater Channel. You could see all of the areas where we spent the money we were able to save so far, but with sea level expected to rise, another three feet at least within the next 20 to 30 years, you could see the huge area of the Delta that is under threat. So the debate is this, how much more money do we spend on the existing levees to rise them up to keep the seawater out with more pumping stations or what areas do we choose to let go, let the sea overtake it? What goes, what stays? It's still an ongoing debate as it has been since 2015. Now back to you. Many people are finding a way to use all of this available sunshine, ditching their conventional ovens for solar cooking. Others are realizing with more sunshine comes a way to cut their utility bills. Solar panels line the rooftops and new developments and area businesses taking free renewable energy from the sun and turning it into a way to power their lives. Here's a look at our solar energy forecast for today. It's optimal clear skies with a high solar potential. UNESCO World Heritage Sites provide testimony to evolutions in our climate and our societies. They are milestones in human history, and some of them are already deeply affected by the negative impact of climate change. This challenge is not insurmountable. Across the world, women and men are designing new sustainable practices and sharing knowledge to better manage sites and resources. Innovative solutions are emerging, rooted in local situations that build on cultural diversity, on local traditions and experiences. This diversity is humanity's ultimate renewable energy, and I'm convinced we must make the most of it to invent new approaches to development. World Heritage shows what we can achieve when we join forces for an ideal. Each of us has a role to play in combating climate change to transmit to future generations the heritage we hold in common.